Like meanwhile, President Trump meeting with his national security team today to discuss North Korea as they prepare tougher sanctions that would cut off trade with the rogue regime. This after President Trump condemned North Korea's purported overnight test of a hydrogen bomb, which would be its most powerful nuclear weapon to date. Meanwhile, one of President Trump's most outspoken Republican critics with a vote of confidence in the president's team's favor. I'm confident that the people around the president are giving him good advice and, uh, and I believe that he'll follow it. I sure hope he does. Obviously, we, you, you like a leader that is measured and sober and, and consistent. Our allies uh, want to hear that. I think our adversaries need to hear that. Judy Miller is an adjunct fellow at the Manhattan Institute for Policy Research, a Pulitzer Prize winning author and journalist and Fox News contributor. Judy, good to see you. We'll get to Senator Flake in a moment. But first, I want to get your reaction to President Trump's response to North Korea's hydrogen bomb test and the stunning and ominous warning from Defense Secretary Mattis. Well, I think, Arthel, what really struck me was that the Trump administration's response was primarily delivered by non-President Trump. <laughs> it was delivered by James Mattis, the Secretary of Defense, and earlier in the day to Fox News, in fact, by uh, Secretary of the Treasury Steve Mnuchin. Mnuchin was delivering an economic message and a warning to China and to anyone else who trades with North Korea that the United States is going to pursue sanctions, tougher sanctions. But I was particularly struck by the very strong military warning issued by General Mattis. And I think that that's the message that Kim Jong-un is going to get today from the Trump administration. It's very interesting that the response has been measured and for this administration relatively coordinated. And let's get back to Senator Jeff Flake of Arizona. Judy, what do you think our allies want to hear from President Trump and what do our adversaries need to hear from the president? Well, I think I don't know whether or not you would put China in the adversary or the ally category at this point, but I think China needs to know that it must do more to control North Korea. I think that the North Korean test tactically was a mistake for North Korea because it embarrassed the Chinese at a time when the world was looking to them, when they have some very important meetings, when President Xi is going into elections himself later on. I think this was a miscalculation on Kim Jong-un's part. As for our allies, I think after all of the mixed signals they've gotten from the administration, they needed to hear General Mattis's commitment on an ironclad support for them and their security. I think that was absolutely essential to making sure that Japan and South Korea don't decide to use some of the nuclear material that they have to protect themselves in their own nuclear programs. Because in addition to thwarting the nuclear threat from North Korea, nonproliferation should and must remain a very important goal of this administration and of any American administration. Of course, but you can't expect Japan or South Korea to stand down with such an ominous uh, warning uh, facing them. But let's not go there. Let's stay with this because we could go there. But let's, let me stay here. Uh, I want to talk to you, Judy, about a tweet from the president this afternoon. Uh, here it is. He's saying, North Korea has conducted a major nuclear test. Their words and actions continue to be very hostile and dangerous to the United States. North Korea is a rogue nation which has become a great threat and embarrassment to China, which is trying to help but with little success. Your thoughts on that. I think once again, Arthel, you see the emphasis on China because it is only China that can really cut off trade totally to North Korea. They did a gesture in the beginning when we asked them to help out with sanctions. They limited coal exports from North Korea, but they've really got to do more to rein in that what President Trump appropriately called a rogue state. At this point, the entire world, including everyone in the United Nations, voted for a non-nuclear, a denuclearized uh, Korean peninsula. This must happen. But how does that happen? If the world is to be safe this and if the region happen, is going to happen. But how does it happen? 
it has to happen because China has to say to Korea enough. Now, I understand that at the moment there is some tension between President Xi of China and Kim Jong-un, that already Kim Jong-un seems to be testing his relationship not only with the United States, but also with the Chinese. I think that, too, is a grave miscalculation. China must ultimately decide whether or not it wants to stand with the world and stand against North Korea, or whether or not it wants to permit Kim Jong-un to continue to play China against the rest of the world. This is a, a, a really moment of, of truth for China. It's a test of what kind of nation they want to be on the world stage. And I hope that this administration could nudge China, China in the right direction. Because without them, you're right, Arthel, there is no hope of containing this program or denuclearizing the peninsula. With them, there's a small possibility. Strong assessment there, Judy. President Trump later tweeting today that the U.S. is considering, uh, in addition to other options, stopping all trade with any country doing business with North Korea. Is this a plausible, uh, adequate diplomatic move, Judy? Well, I think it's one that Secretary Mnuchin actually uh, scaled back himself in an interview with Fox News. That was the first opening gambit. But what he said after that was that we intend to strengthen sanctions. Look, our trade with China accounts for about 4% of GDP. If we suspended trade with China, that would affect not only our own economy negatively, but the global economy. So I don't think that's going to happen. But I think at this point, we really needed to be very tough and clear about what is expected from China. And I think Steve Mnuchin sent that message today. And you're going to hear much more of that, both out of the National Security Council meeting tomorrow and also in the United Nations, because we are coming up to a UN General Assembly. And I think first and foremost on every nation's agenda is going to be what to do about preventing war in the Korean Peninsula. Absolutely. Already there is that emergency meeting scheduled for tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. A final right. question, Judy, circling back to your first observation uh, and the strong ominous words coming from General Mattis, the fact that it did come from the general's uh, mouth. I wanted to ask you, with that in mind, what do you think Kim Jong-un's next move will be? Well, I hope, I hope it's going to be to take General Mattis very seriously because the generals who advi are advising the president, and we have, of course, now General Kelly in the White House. We have H.R. McMaster in the White House. These are three men who understand all too well the consequences of the use of military force and who do, do not make idle threats easily. They make threats when they're absolutely determined that if and when force is necessary, they are prepared to use it. Make no mistake, Arthel, I have never heard such language out of General Mattis. Uh, I've never heard, rarely, such words out of a Secretary of Defense. I think it indicates the true nature and the true crisis nature of the situation in which we all now find ourselves. So I was very struck by his warning, and I hope that Kim Jong-un also takes General Mattis seriously and President Trump seriously as well. Judy Miller, we leave it there. Thanks, Judy.